Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be making the sumps, and if you haven't watched the first two episodes, I'll put the links to those in the video in the upper right hand corner if I can figure out how to do that. There we go. So what can we say about sumps? Unless you're running an all-in-one system, uh, which actually uh, work pretty well for some of the smaller tanks, uh, you're going to be running a sump, which is basically just a tank underneath or next to your display tank that is able to house all your equipment. They're incredibly flexible, uh, allowing you to adapt and add different filtration and also add a little bit of water volume. So they're pretty integral to a system like this and basically are the engine room that runs your tank. So I have a loose rule of thumb that if I can save at least 50% on making something versus buying something, I'll go ahead and make it. And that's definitely the case here. We're making a six foot sump and two 48 inch sumps basically. And with the cost of acrylic, we're saving probably 75% over retail on these sumps. When you're cutting your acrylic, you want to start with the right blade, and that's a triple chip grind saw blade, which is specifically for plastic. And really, it's all about the cuts and the edge prep when it comes to making a sump. So to edge prep, I'm going to be routing it, and you want to use an upcut spiral bit. I'm sure there are other router bits that you can use, but this is really the ideal one. You'll have kind of fewer ridges, and it'll be ready to glue right off the router. And to route it, you're really just taking off a hair's amount of acrylic off of each edge, making sure that all the edges remain parallel. Uh, and then you will be ready to glue right after routing each edge. And just a word of caution, the cuts are really pivotal. Everything has to be perfectly square and, and the, the cuts have to be parallel. So if you don't have the right tools and some basic kind of knowledge about how to use them, you know, it's pretty easy to mess things up. And after you've done the edge prep, remove a little bit of the film on each edge. So this is essentially the order of operations in which you'll be gluing things up. You'll start with a side of the sump, and then you'll put the two ends on. And basically if you do it this way, you'll always ensure that you're gluing on the bottom, and you'll always have gravity on your side. Uh, you'll put some baffles in if you have them at this point. And then you're going to rotate the entire structure 180 degrees, and then put the other side on, on the bottom. And then you rotate it 90 degrees. And I always then put the top on next, assuming you're gonna have some cutouts, which will become clear why I do that in the next step. You rotate it 180 degrees again, and then you'll put on the bottom. And because you put the top on with the access um, cutouts, you'll then have access to the inside to glue the bottom as well. And here's the process of making the adjustable baffle for the return section. And here's the return of the poor man's CNC, uh, this time using blue painter's tape, which is often the solution to any problem. <laughs> and uh, again, this is just making the frame uh, that you will then use the pattern following bit in your router to cut out uh, whatever shape you like. As you start the glue ups, uh, you just need to make sure that the ends and the baffles that you're putting in as the first step, that they are perfectly vertical. Uh, and so you can use anything. I've just made some little MDF L's and I'm using some weights and clamps to make sure that things are perfectly plumb here. And again, it's really useful if you have a, a very flat reference surface 
uh, to glue on. So I'm actually using a kitchen countertop, which is, you know, granite slab, should be perfectly dead flat. Great reference surface. Here we have the other side on. And then we are gonna go ahead and make the top with the access cutouts. And uh, I'm gonna be using white for the tops and some of the other accent pieces really just for style points. Now another way to do this would be to keep the top piece of acrylic as a single piece, glue that together and then cut out these access portions afterwards. But I like doing this in advance because you can round over the underside lip with a router um, to give a nice smooth underside edge. I always tend to <laughs> cut myself on the undersides of sump if that, if that inside lip is sharp. And before you glue any edge, you do want to clean it with a little bit of alcohol. Just a little bit, not too much, because alcohol can actually damage the acrylic if you use too much. But just get the oils and fingerprints off so you have a nice clean seam. And we're going to be using, uh, for all of this gluing, what's called the pin method. And you can, there are lots of good videos on the pin method. But basically, you use acupuncture needles and you insert them in the seams to create just a little bit of a gap. You know, put them in the corners and maybe every 12 inches or so. And then you're going to be using a solvent glue, uh, either Weld On 3 or Weld On 4. Uh, they're basically the same, just with different set times. And you're basically going to flood the seam with uh, the glue using a, I just use a hypodermic needle. And it's, you'll see it's really watery and it, uh, it's drawn into the seam through capillary action. You let that sit for maybe 30 seconds or a minute it softens up the acrylic and then you pull the pins and you should be able to get a pretty good uh, bubble free seam at that point. And after you glue on the bottom really well, you have a box. And what I've done is I've left the top and the bottom pieces just overhanging uh, about an eighth of an inch larger in each dimension than I need. And then I just go back over and route them off so they are perfectly flush and have a nice finished edge. And as you can see, acrylic shavings have, um, I think they have a static charge or some electrical charge, and, and they just stick to absolutely everything, including my face. Uh, so this was pretty comic uh, to do with all these shavings. I think I probably ate a couple of them too. off everything uh, you go back over and round over everything with a just a slight round over bit uh, it makes handling them easier you don't cut yourself on all the sharp edges and just uh, for the for the long haul just makes uh, working with the sumps a lot nicer the final step that I do when when these sumps are all all done is I put in every single seam a piece of quarter inch acrylic which is basically reinforcing and sealing every single seam. And this is an extra step that you don't have to do. It's probably a crutch because <laughs> if your seams are good enough, you don't need to do this, but I feel better doing this on every single seam. It strengthens the seam and makes sure that they're absolutely watertight. So here's the Fuge with that adjustable baffle. And this is the common sump. And I added uh, vertical reinforcements to each of those top crossbars because those are the first things that break on a sump. And we're going to have to connect these two sumps with these bulkheads here. We're also going to add in some ball valves, which I painted white because I'm insane. But you got to be you, right? But I'm pretty happy the way these turned out. I think they are going to serve us really well and we saved a whole chunk of change as well. And we'll get into how all these sumps uh, work together in the plumbing video. So thanks again for joining me. That's it for this installment. Happy reefing and 
uh, don't forget to subscribe.